This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wrestling Mayhem Show 722. Tuesdays, we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Compound in Pittsburgh, PA. Safe and sound from the COVIDs, we hope. Uh, so, uh, we got a crew with us. Mad Mike is gone on assignment uh, in New York City. So, uh, he'll be returning. Um, uh, so, if you want your Mad Mike ness, uh, you're going to have to tune into Monday Night uh, Monday Mayhem uh, Warriors that we had this week. But well, we got a crew with us. We have the uh, always solemn Riz is with us, and always promoting the product. Sorg. There you go. It I, is IndieWrestling.us. Is that Matt Connor versus Bro Hemoth? I forgot that, that was a Matt thing that Connor happened. Versus Bro Hemoth. God, is that our first ride show we did with them in 2018? Jeez, I think. Wow. But you know what? You get you sign up for indie wrestling us and the indie wrestling network, you get seven day free trial. <laughs> You're just reading the corner of the screen. I, I am. You know what's wild to me? I, that that thing is streaming from a computer sitting uh, six <clears throat> feet away from me, which is safe. No, you can watch it. And and, yeah. and it's streaming to Riz behind Riz and then back here through the studio studio to you. <sighs> It's the it's the uh, uh, double roundabout with the Dutch something that they do for I don't know. Uh, also with us is a mal- mildly perturbed ma- mainstream Mantel. Matt with us. How you doing, Matt? Are you back with Hello. us? Are you still wrangling Wait, over there? I forgot to do my I'll put on my little, my prop comedy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. There you go. I, anyway, that's all I got. Who's yes, that? How are you doing? I only saw Hello, one of your Russell kids. Hello, Russell Sun. Hello, the Riz. Hello, Rob. Hello, Hello Russell, Russell Dad. Dad. That's right. Hey, Rob is here. Hey, I'm here. You're the first one in the studio for the Mayhem show <laughs> in about four months. I certainly am. <laughs> and I'm probably, well... I was gonna say they're definitely closer people, but I'm only like I'm only half away, half hour away in Evans City. Anyway, I so. think you're. I think you live further away than both people on the line with us tonight. It's an easy drive. You do. I probably have like less of a problem getting here though than no tunnel. No, well, well, one tunnel. Not, not one necessarily tunnel. now. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of going on on the road. Well, <coughs> Rush hour has Fort, been less rushy. This like Fort Pitt was the easiest it's been in a long time. Mm. Granted, I was rolling in at like eight thirty. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's crazy when it's not an obstacle course out yeah. there, right? Uh, but this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're going to have fun with you guys tonight. Uh, of course, uh, you guys are uh, out there on Facebook land. Uh, the, twi- the Twitter Periscope, the Twitch, the YouTube pages, wherever you may be viewing us. Please share the show. Hit the like button. Hit the favorite. Hit the heart button. Uh, if you're joining us live and if you're joining us on the podcast later on, please hit a share, hit a review, and I'm going to turn that down. Um, host, please turn down your podcast. Uh, but uh, you can also check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You'll find this and other great podcasts like the Monday Night or the Monday Mayhem Warriors. I'm still trying to rework that name um but i've kept it two weeks in a row so uh and also the indie mayhem show had some good conversations over the last couple of weeks about the speaking out movement um and open for ideas for this week's episode I actually don't have anything recorded since i have some more time thursday nights now sorry uh but, who are you yelling at uh i don't know someone that has a thursday podcast just let me know about it uh but oh. <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, go check out everything over there, wrestlingmamshow.com. Hit us at that email address. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmamshow.com. Yeah. We actually got an email. We got a mad mic mail, just like the good old days, uh, for later in the show. Um, also, uh, 412206WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. And of course, please follow that Facebook page and group. A lot of great discussions going on there. A lot of great discussions happening. <laughs> about a lot of things going on in wrestling uh, over on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show group. Uh, like I said, we're here every Tuesday. Please subscribe to us on your podcast provider, wherever that may be. There is also the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed. That includes this, the Monday Night Show, Indie Mayhem Show, and whatever random wrestling that may also happen. So please go check that out. 
And thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Our friends at the fan of the show level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby of J Town Team Hammerfist. Our friends at the Poppy Club level, Bradley. Ru- Excuse me, Bradley Brothers, Dave Potter, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys at the Pizza Club. Hashtag Doc- butts for Bradley. There you go. Pizza Club, Doc Remedy, and Kyle Turner, and our friends at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com, and Farmsworth Investments. Thank you, Farmsworth, for joining on us on last week's show, and we got to see your very, very pink room. Uh, you guys can support the show, too, and show off your room at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you, everybody that's been uh, supporting the show, especially through these tough times, and you guys are still hanging on. I, I have seen, like, no drop-offs except for Mad Mike. Uh, <laughs> but he's seasonal anyway, so. Um, but anyways, let's get into it. There was some stuff. Guys, I had, I, I, w- I had so much fun. I got home from visiting some friends over the weekend responsibly. Responsibly. Um, and I went and I had not watched NXT for the week and I found myself on a Sunday night watching a, a great American bash, uh, with no commercials and it was glorious. It felt like a real pay-per-view, even though it was NXT show from Wednesday night. Um, we did have the part one of the great American bash against fighter fest. Um, and, uh, from what I understand, uh, ratings wise, NXT has been actually winning in the last couple of weeks, which kind of surprises me. Mm-hmm. So uh, where are you guys with that, you know, between watching them or if you only picked one of them, uh, you know, who, who more got your attention? And, and, and I mean, it, 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 Wednesday nights are still definitely the it's the it's the one night where I can forget about how messed up everything I, is. I have the benefit of it's kind of like like with the month. Well, kind of going back to like the Monday Night War stuff mm-hmm. is um, I, have, I use Hulu live. Mm-hmm. And if I'm watching, like I, di- I didn't see it live this last week. But if I'm watching on Wednesday night, um, I can watch NXT when it or two, two Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday, night. yeah. Like I can watch NXT when it's on uh, because I have t- TNT. I have the East Coast and West Coast. Yeah, yeah, So it's almost kind of the same thing as when you'd have the replay right yeah. after i mean it's not right after it's like 11 o'clock instead of 10 o'clock or something yeah like, hey, it, i can eat in between i've been doing the same thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of it, it was kind of nice when they were first going and i had to watch both of them on wednesday nights yeah. right now I, I try to watch aew live and then i don't want to watch any more commercials between having watched raw and and, and aew yeah uh so i wait till thursday night to watch nxt just yeah. flat you know mm-hmm. so so that that's kind of the set decision for me and and really aew is the one that as i've said multiple times still like just has more energy for me yeah uh, riz matt what what did you guys how are you how are your um, wednesday nights fun like <laughs> like uh, unlike you know even though th- this past monday was okay mm-hmm. wednesday is probably the best night for wrestling consistently and and honestly could you could you imagine a a Monday night WCW WWE WWF war in this day and age hmm. with the with TiVo with uh, DVR with everything that we have? I wouldn't be dealing with my VHS no. uh, recording like I, I had been. Yes. Now, do you mean necessarily like this day and age, or just specifically technology in this? wise? Oh no, yeah. like yeah. the yeah. prime. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the prime years, right, right, right. The, 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 the good, the good years, right. Not yeah. the Kiwis and the naked Midian years. I'm talking I, about I, like. I just mean like not like right now too, where nothing seems like it's really like must see. Mm-hmm. You know, no, there's no yeah, big, yeah, like, like you know, like. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, the environment. With I, no, I, I you still, know. I still miss those. I still miss the fandom, mark out entire crowd moments, but. Mm-hmm. And I, I used to have picture in picture, mm-hmm. so I would have like both of them on, mm-hmm. and I'd be able to flip it. Or, or if there was like, um, you know, plus you had the replay afterwards. You know, yeah. So it yeah. was like even if yeah. even if <clears throat> something like interesting things were going on on both, mm-hmm. it's like okay, I'll watch WWF because yeah. this is gonna be on. And again you didn't have Twitter back then. On. Like now yeah. you have Twitter, so you like people really could you switch over happened. on a dime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's things were pretty avoidable even if you were online and. Um, yeah. since we, since we kind of rolled into the, what are you watching first, um, um, yeah. discussion, <laughs> uh, Tina's an AEW first, Bobby's an NXT first, Podner's an NXT, uh, first with AEW recorded. Um, so, so there you go back and forth mm-hmm. there. 
Um, but uh, 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 Matt, how about how about you? How are, how are you dealing with your Wednesday nights? I usually mm-hmm. see you tweeting about one or the other. Matt has gone oh. dark. Oh, he, he's he may have a kid <laughs> some stuff going on there. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so he's, he's, but, he's but, turning into the Undertaker. But generally, um. <laughs> uh, show wise, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, since these were. I mean, Tony Khan, I listen to a little bit of the Tony Khan podcast on for the AW cast. I usually tune into those ones because I want to know what's going on. I think mm-hmm. I think it's very interesting to hear the head of the company talking about things. Mm-hmm. And, and again, they're more transparent about how they're dealing with certain things today than other companies. So I'm, I'm very much interested as somebody that works in a version of this business in production mm-hmm. in general uh, that, that, that know what somebody on that level is doing. And he talked about how uh, uh, basically they looked at it as the, you know, they were going, well, fighter fest of course was supposed to be a UK maybe pay-per-view hmm. um, or live or just, just what it was before. Yeah. And they, um, you know, said, well, this is four hours of good pay-per-view quality content. Let's do it as a pay-per-view. I kind of, or as a two week event on the show, just make it free, you know, make that a thing. You know, I think it's a good adaptation of at least that brand, I guess. Um, versus WWE's, it, it, I, I like, it's weird that I say I like the limited commercial interruption brought to you by Mountain Dew. Like, uh-huh. that, that's a weird thing, like, weird thing <laughs> yeah. to stick on to be like, I, it, but it makes it feel like even though this is a thing on USA Network with commercials, which again, I watched the non commercial version, yeah. but that was an hour 45. So it's like, wow, you really didn't get commercials with this thing, yeah, right? It wasn't your normal. Yeah, you got 15 of- minutes versus a half an hour of commercials. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So limited commercial interruptions. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. and the matches weren't interrupted and stuff like that, and they, they really put that over. Um uh, uh versus the other side, they they push their picture in picture stuff like they usually do with new contests and stuff that he, I know Matt had, had pointed out earlier in the day about the hashtags and in, in price packs. Yeah. Um so I, I thought they had a really good vibe. I, I unfortunately like both of them suffer from doing very showy things and setting up matches with the same people next week, so it doesn't feel as though mm-hmm. it's all quote unquote and, one show and with yeah. and with um again like a bunch of people just got released but yeah. given this environment right now there's not a lot of room and there's not a lot of opportunity to be popping up in other places and as far as no like you know no, you don't have that same kind of money coming in right now to where it's it feels more i mean just in terms of your 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 roster or who you can match guys up with AEW feels like more in a holding pattern than like WWE who has like tons more guys they don't use on TV all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that they can switch in should guys get sick or be, you know, all of a sudden, Oh, I don't feel comfortable being here because somebody in my family's got yeah whatever, you know, to where they've got more of a, I wouldn't even call them like reserve roster, but they've got more, again, more like deeper resources. Yeah. I guess to, to make for more, unique in, in you know in every case yeah. in, in both cases mm-hmm. I, I i you know remember the first few weeks when it was like who are these random guys from nxt that keep popping up in tag matches all week yeah. long you know mm-hmm. you, you had stuff like that and and now that i think people will have uh for one way or another settled into how things are i think you're seeing of course more faces around wwe mm-hmm. uh aew like you're seeing like brian pillman's popping up now at, yeah. down there brian pillman jr and Ophidian and, and a lot of guys there uh, uh, pineapple pete became a thing through this mm-hmm. through those yeah. those tapings so, that they did so through I guess march we're seeing like more of those guys yeah. you know but you're not it's seeing of... like somebody who just got released from a million dollar contract at wwe no you're not seeing no, them no, pop no up no. necessarily no because you know? nobody's in a rush to yeah. right right now because it because yeah, it's, it, it's it, time it, to set up yeah. yeah it's hard to make those kinds of big decisions mm-hmm. i mean everybody in in i mean just look at yeah. whatever company you're dealing with you know or or other companies that you follow in the news everybody is um if they're being smart about it it's going to have a timid response yeah to moving forward and it's just kind of yeah everything's sort yeah. of in a holding yeah. pattern as far as that because it's concerned. literally like yeah. we thought we were moving ahead like, I mean, how many of us were thought we were moving ahead yeah. and had to slam the brakes on life once again yeah. this week depending <laughs> on where you're at so 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 you know how a, a, a giant multi-billion dollar company million dollar company wherever you're at already you know moves like the titanic yeah. and now <laughs> the world the world is throwing icebergs in front of you mm-hmm. you know you got to do something about it and you can only you can only plot so far ahead mm-hmm. you know because you have no idea what's coming down because 
you, you know, it, it's just so unpredictable right now. So, um, and Tina's uh, pointing out what makes uh, AEW unique as well is AEW Dark. Um, it doesn't really doesn't really feel like a lesser show in a sense where uh, Mox the Champ had a match on Dark rather than Dynamite. No, and that's the case. Really, like when we saw the taping here in, in Pittsburgh, like I thought the more exciting stuff happened on the Dark. Mm-hmm. Holy oh, crap! Yeah. Um, I've I've been and I haven't watched Dark for a while just because it's I'm just getting my fill of wrestling and it's so weird right now, right? But um, and, I mean, and also with again when you're looking at like overall viewers like for the TV product, you know, mm-hmm. for for like AEW and NXT, it's what like seven hundred thousand. Yeah, six hundred seven thousand. The ceiling is below a million, mm-hmm. you know, and and it's still just kind of it, it goes a little up and down, and it's probably based more on real life things going on, mm-hmm. affect holidays, things like that, uh, more than anything else. It's not but, like it's a, it, but, it, 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 but, nothing has the brand value yeah, of Monday Night but, Raw, but you don't have that same disparity between or as much of a disparity between stuff that's showing on TV and what people might be watching online. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas Mm -hmm. like say, I mean, not that it's been that good for a while, but if 5 million people are watching raw, which it's like half that, I think it's like two, but yeah, it might be like two. But if you know, where, where, but if you look at your online content, you know, like, Oh, we're going to put this on YouTube where maybe only, you know, there might be a couple or a few hundred thousand, maybe a million people watching. There's more of that gap. You know, yeah. to where there is that many more people watching the televised product than yeah. there is on the, you know, hey, you got to go online and find it. Yeah. You know, to to where you don't have that. Well, especially with AEW, who who, who you know, like I said, they've they've kind of topped out around a million at the most. Also you, you remember, know. also remember, yeah. AEW came in as a very online brand. Yeah. They so, had what two pay per views yeah. if you include all in. Yeah. Uh, uh, live specials like live mm-hmm. free specials that really made um, uh, Bleacher Report as a as a service. Yeah. So so you came in with all this, yeah. and, and you put it on television. I mean, you're going to have a large section that is not watching live on Wednesday nights. Yeah. So I mean, if you look at that footprint in their YouTube channel, look at how much they put on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Look at things like being the elite. Like I mean. Like it's almost kind of going backwards from where you had, like, say, WWE was a yeah. TV product for thirty years first. Yeah. Before, hey, we got to start. We got to get with this newfangled internet thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's it's. There are multiple vectors, and while the big money deal and a big cornerstone, like mm-hmm. like the TV deal, is obviously going to be, uh, you know, not knowing completely the financials of it, but like the TV deal is the like rock of we know we got this and this funds yeah. x part of the business right we know we can depend on this as a thing yeah uh and then we can build the rest of the business around it whether that be your pay-per-views merchandise mm-hmm. uh etc cetera, etc cetera. uh so so that makes and that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. AEW is doing something really smart in these times mm-hmm. as wwe's and and wb and nxt are in the lockdown type we're only going to perform with our performers, our wrestlers, our trainees are going to be this crowd. Mm-hmm. AEW is going out there and going, uh, especially with Cody. Mm-hmm. Uh, AEW and Cody are going out there and saying, I have a championship belt. Anybody can challenge for this belt. Mm-hmm. Inside and outside AEW. Yeah. Yeah. So they're bringing in wrestlers they know can get some uh, buzz, mm-hmm. like uh, Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks. Mm-hmm. Still waiting on Warhorse, but yeah, you anyway, see the campaigning like, going on online with the different indie yeah. guys. Oh yeah, like, hey Cody, like, look uh, at me. You know, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and, and everybody sitting at home yeah. not doing Warhorse. anything right now. Yeah. So what's that? Oh, what was that Riz? Yeah. What was that Riz? Yeah, like Warhorse. It's like a uh, Warhorse. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Because the kind it, of, cause it, kind of the, the closest you know we kind of got with that with remember remember when Cena was U.S. champ and he was doing his open challenge mm-hmm. and we'd they were bringing in NXT guys so yeah like Sami like, Zayn yeah so so whether it was guys it wasn't necessarily guys from the outside but it was like fresh matchups you know it wasn't yeah. like yeah. oh he's fighting Rusev for the thirtieth straight time and, you know? and they have a deep <laughs> enough roster you could do something yeah. like that and, and and even and it was a good way to introduce guys yeah. so that even if they weren't coming up. 
at that point, yeah, you know they they've already got a highlights and, package and, and, for and, when they do make their main roster. And you're rocket strapping these NXT guys mm-hmm. now, like Riddle guys, to mm-hmm. to still like we don't have that main roster, so we got to fill in some gaps for yeah. whatever reason. Um, so it, it, it's going to be, and all that's going to be so. It, you know, WWE does. I think WWE feels more slapped together on their Monday and Friday shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Friday, I haven't uh, honestly watched entirely for for a few weeks. Um, but uh, but it, but it is. But but the, sometimes it works. It's like it's like WWE got backed in the corner with the thing where some things are starting to work now. They're figuring out how to do it here. I mean, then there's the safety conversation, which I'm trying to avoid because I feel like we have it every week. Mm-hmm. But it is something. Yeah, that we we're, get more and more uh, yeah. angry at the situation. <laughs> it is, and 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 um, the, the cage sides, cage side seats had um, a good article about our, uh, you know, is it okay to feel bad about watching wrestling? Yes, because yeah. it's kind of a tough watch, but also you're a fan, and it's a very conflicted thing. Um, so, you know, like we, you know for fandom or morbidly or whatever we want to keep watching and i don't know we we just keep watching the train wreck right and and a very good point in it which i will go to it it's more interesting than anything else happening on tv right now as far as new stuff yeah goes. and that's um, sad I, it, it was well, <laughs> it, I, I would argue it was before but uh but now <laughs> it's sad and angry that that this is happening mm-hmm. it's, it's, it is it is so yeah i'm not, I'm not gonna get political no, 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 no. It, 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 that is a thing. But, um, but uh, you know, and again, oh. I, you know, regardless, you know, we can have the testing argument. But I, I feel like AEW is safer doing it. But even that, it's interesting watching being the elite and the young bucks are talk, like talk about the idea of like, listen, when we come in and do a test, there's a very good possibility if we get tested positive, we are here in Jacksonville away from our families for two weeks. I was, yep. was going to say, too, when you were talking about like kind of the different responses of getting out in front of it, like what's, you know, the owner of AEW or Money Guy or whatever, Tony Khan, you know, saying mm-hmm. that where they have the uh, AEW to what they kind of have working to their advantage in that case is they don't have that same corporate identity Mm-mm. that WWE has. Whereas if all of a sudden they they dropped the shit and Vince came out and started addressing these things personally and stuff, it would mm. seem, A, it would be kind of unusual. B, it would be like, oh shit, if he's doing that now, there must be, you know, yeah, there must be trouble. But, yeah. you know, whereas, whereas, like, they don't, on the other side. It happens when yeah. somebody dies or, yeah. it, somebody dies or 9 11 happens. Yeah, or something, Period. You know, there's a disaster. Yeah. Period. But, but, Period. but with, but with, like I said, with over on the AEW side, they're not established enough. Mm-hmm. you know as far as like i said kind of whatever their corporate you know kind of identity so, is so with, they have no expectations yeah they have no they're expectations. setting the yeah. expectations yeah. now yeah so you know. so they can come out and address you know the head honchos can come out and address that and it doesn't seem really weird or it doesn't also, seem like a panic state oh, everything still so, goes down to two that yeah. wwe is a publicly traded company and have mm-hmm. to answer to those people yeah right yeah. a risk good have they have they answered to those people though I, they, well, Have I, they answered I, to their stock people? Their I, stock I think the conversation, saying, no, was... the conversation, because they always get asked during the, the 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 press calls during the board meeting things, right? <laughs> That's where you do hear Triple H talk about testing and things like that. That's where we got the quote about a month ago where they said that they were starting testing uh, or something, <clears throat> like they, that they were just starting testing at the end of, the, uh, of June. Uh, yeah. so, so like that is, that is a part of that, but, of but, June. but still like, you know, this is a company that's, that's always higher quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Versus anyways. Versus, yeah. Go ahead. What, uh, what I was going to say, and, but, and this is, goes back to Rob's point. Yeah. If Vince comes out and says something, mm-hmm. anything, would you believe him? It's like he's cried wolf too many times. Yeah, believe him. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What, do you, what, do you, what, what are you saying for him to come out and, and say that you want to believe? I, I don't. I don't know what no, your context I, I'm, is. I'm just saying, like, if, if he comes out and says anything about yeah. testing, yeah. about <laughs> about yeah. what they're doing, you, you, are you saying how like good it, this is? Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. So you think this like is like the anything. wellness policy kind of thing that you're just like, no, they're going to do what they want to do. Yeah, like and... he's going to be, he's going to come out as. Even if he doesn't want to come out as Vince McMahon, is character, he Mr. McMahon or is he, he is going McMahon? to be Mr. Mr. McMahon? Yeah. <laughs> well, we had a conversation last night. Uh, Mike had a problem with uh, Taz uh, uh, dropped that line <laughs> about the we don't run a sloppy shop here, uh, uh, addressing Moxley being quarantined for two weeks and pushing back the title match. 
um, but in the next in the next vein, called him a coward. So the, I I I am not as strict on this, but Mike's making the argument about well, now you just mix your messaging when this is a very serious thing, and we already have problems with mixed messaging. I think I don't think the line should be taken with as much weight as like calling you a coward for not coming in because of uh, the testing and everything like that. Uh, you know, that I don't I don't think it works in that context. But I mean, but that is, I mean, look, but it look, is, look, but it is worth the conversation. Did. Mm-hmm. I mean, look how quickly it turned when we all assumed Roman took the same route as Sammy and doesn't want to appear because he doesn't, they don't want to like mm-hmm. get in danger. I am still unbelievably shocked to see Kevin Owens on the screen to this week. And I, <clears throat> and, and I, again, I don't know if this was taped before um, his message about his, uh, 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 wife's grandfather dying of COVID, or, or yeah, and was, dealing with that, or it was his father-in-law, or something. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was like grandfather-in-law. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and and that impassioned video that he put out for people to wear your damn mask, etc. And uh, to see him on show was really, really surprising to me. But again, these may have been pre-tapes before that. They, I think they're it, even more. It did give us an amazing shot of Kevin Owens, though. Mm-hmm. Like going back to wrestling, it doesn't give, give, give us that weird shot of Kevin Owens hearing Rey Mysterio say he's going to literally take someone's eye out of his socket. <laughs> oh, we're going to hold on to that. We're going to talk about the eye thing later here in the show. But in the meantime, since uh, Riz already did my commercial for me, uh, IndieWrestling.us, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. Indie Wrestling US Network. IndieWrestling.network. Uh, Riz is watching the uh, the free Twitch feed over there. It's kind of like WWE Network that if you have a bunch of free stuff and you don't get to pick what you uh, uh, get to watch, we put that out for you for free on the Twitch. Uh, but if you want to have that uh, back catalog at your fingertips, you go over to IndieWrestling.network and you can comb through that for seven days free for new subscribers. Five ninety nine. It's cheap. It's easy. It's... Uh, uh, other jokes I'll just step aside from. Uh, but, uh, you know, go check it out. A lot of great stuff over there. Rise of the Nerd, uh, uh, Women with Waffles, uh, Breakfast of Champions, where we had three uh, uh, area champions on there. Back catalogs for things like Rise Wrestling with a Y, like Premier Championship Wrestling, um, like the entire run of Prospect Pro Wrestling live shows at least and of course not just there we have a lot of stuff going on uh working with our friends at prospect prospect pro wrestling and over at fight underground new matches all of them filmed in june safely I just saw, yes go I ahead saw the latest one pop yes, up yes of uh war war Haas and good guys good guys good guys and if you go check out that match there's a little bit of a surprise at the end isn't there riz I didn't watch the entire thing. Damn it, Riz! I saw, I saw it. I saw it when it was coming in. Riz, you're gonna have to go rewatch it to figure out what the surprise is. But uh... oh, I'm going to, because <laughs> to be honest with you, yes, from being uh, getting a little sidetracked, being a Pittsburgh fan for thirty plus years, mm-hmm. um, Fight Underground is putting on amazing content, mm-hmm. especially at this time. Mm-hmm. And they bring they're bringing in guys, mixing in talent from the past to fight the future, the, the present, and it's amazing how they how it works. Tell me um, more, Riz. Tell yeah. me more. <laughs> tell tell me more. Tell oh, me God, more. You're doing, we, we, you're doing you, the tell me more. I mean, I, I, no. tell me more. That, not that uh, you know, you know, no, you don't, don't have two of the videographers not, not, that worked not, on that project not that here. We, not, not that, that we're we're blushing over here, but uh, t- <laughs> tell me more about what you like about Fight Underground. <laughs> so those three words, tell me more, have haunted me <laughs> for the past few oh, years. Oh, because of RJ and Dalton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, it, it's an in, it, it's an interesting concept that. I think a lot of people in the Pittsburgh area are going to enjoy. Good, good. And you can find that on IndieWrestling.us. I really want, um, because there was a good clip that I know I shared in the Slack with you guys, but I really want Arthur and Arthur MacArthur on this show in some capacity (laughs) for us to just. I don't know. I I I wish Lunchbox was still around on the show to interact with Arthur Arthur MacArthur. MacArthur. I need to send him some clips. 
Uh, he's this, he's this very old school carny strongman kind of thing, mm-hmm. and it's. <laughs> What was the clip that he sh- I shared was something about like like I see people look at me like a deli sandwich or yeah. something. <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, but anyways, uh, he's one of those great guys from uh, I-, I-, I believe he's in the AIW circle over there, and wrestling is very not happening in the Ohio area. So yeah, because he was because um, we yeah. did those. What was it? W I forget the the letters. W-X- UXWA UXWA yes. that we did last fall. He was. They're in. not around, and I finally uh, recall all of the letters. Yeah. So what's up? Uh, <laughs> what's up, Razor Sharp and the crew up there? I see your tweets. Hope you're doing well out there. I'll give you a shout out. Uh, but uh, yeah, because it's it, it was like the it was kind of the um, you know the the I want to say the trainees, but uh, you know it was like a lot of that AIW circle yeah. of people, and it was really cool to see those. Yeah, and then they so, were mixing it up with like the, the, yeah. the one show I was at. It was like a bunch of Chikara guys. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That was yeah, cool. I got, yeah, good line of Chikara guys. A few of the ants were up there. Yeah, um, uh, uh, Boomer. Hatfield, I think, was at one mm-hmm. uh, against Doctor Dan. Uh, so, no, really good crew, really good crew there. So, but uh, what's that? When did when did I become pink? A pink lady with the tell? Oh, tell me more. What? <laughs> oh, the the yeah. Oh, tell it's me a, more. Tell me more. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 Greece. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Oh, I did watch. I did watch Hamilton this weekend, so I feel very cultured. Um. <laughs> so it's it's good it's good king george was in the studio once you know uh now i finally got to see him in in character so when after somebody yelled at me for not telling them that the hamilton cast member was in the studio but yeah. um anyway so <laughs> back to wrestling um where were we i i had a transition then we started talking about indies a little bit more um and we really kind of laid into that last week so i don't want to get into that necessarily um <laughs> let's see i i got oh no no i don't want to talk about eye for an eye yet no 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 uh Dan, the, matt's not here because i want to talk about the ascension has a new matt, name that's right matt's right here sorry. is he here he, he's right here matt are he's you here right here are you with us hey, sir. i'm back i'm here <laughs> matt good i have something for you yes I, it's ascension news i saw it Okay. All right. The so, cool dudes with attitudes? No, that's not oh. what they're going with. They're, <laughs> that's what they should have done. They're, they're going, they were going as FKA on things they were announced for, which, of course, is formally known as if you've seen a former WWE person <laughs> on, on a wrestling poster. But apparently they're going with, oh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, the Awakening. Mac Harlins, are you, are, you, um, are you down with the Wasteland on The Awakening? Have they had... A match on the Indies yet? I don't think they have. No, they were supposed to. They had been kind of pre-announced was... by sometime this year oh, by know, some I, promotions. I, I think I had, yeah, I think I'd seen like yeah. around here. But, 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 saying, but nothing, yeah. yeah, nothing was. It was, yeah, no, I think it was sh- scheduled sh- to be, um, was it Danhausen, Gangrel, and I forget who else. What? I think Effie. What? Da- Gangrel, Effie, and, uh, Danhausen versus Warhorse and the Ascension. My God, who booked that? <laughs> Danhausen and Warhorse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was yeah. going to be on Mania. Of course, it would have been. <laughs> yeah, on Mania. that was going to be a Mania show. Oh my God, jeez, that um, God, oh, the Mania that was. A, yeah. Ah, oh, between that, F- F- Effie's big gay party, whatever, and and the sweatpants battle royal and for the culture. My God, there was so much good that was supposed to happen this year. Then we went another way. Yeah. That was also the mania week that was supposed to give us Minoru Suzuki versus Orange Cassidy. Ah! Oh, don't remind me. I love I mean, this is just a picture of uh Eddie only in Derek <laughs> direction for some reason. Yeah. So. Oh it is Derek. Yeah. He's saying he's thinking up on you. So, um, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Um, so SummerSlam weekend, huh? So SummerSlam, <laughs> no. Oh my god. oh god, there's not even gonna be. Any- Wait, oh god, that's not gonna happen either, is it? No, no. no. Oh, that that reminds me too with the when we were talking about the you know AEW and NXT shows, like again, like any of these pay per views or takeovers or whatever. Or any special events don't feel special anyway. No, where Great American Bash that would have been a great one to do like outside mm-hmm. or something, you know, at just to beach. have it would have been safer. Look, you know, just a different look at least. You're it, in Orlando, you know? do it. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, just uh, like in your house should have like 
went back to its roots mm -hmm. and actually had a house. Yeah. For, Could like, have been just but, in for, somebody's house. But that was kind of fun what they ended up doing with the set <laughs> it and was, everything. It so was. it's like, okay. It was. And then know, brought back Todd Pettengill. Love... Plus, it's not like the In Your House name carries a lot of prestige or anything. You know, no, it's not like you're no, doing... Yeah. No, <laughs> no, but that was... I mean, it, no, yeah. it, no, no. It does to a certain generation of wrestling yeah. fans. But if you're going to fuck around, it's going to be on a... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so I appreciate the return of the set pieces yeah. between In yes. Your House and NXT is the one doing this. Mm -hmm. Nobody else really did this. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, the Great American Bash having the cars, you know, mm -hmm. which 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 came into play with the trunk spot. Um, by the way, Dexter Loomis yeah. is fucking amazing. <laughs> Yeah, have we talked much about this? I didn't know how you could take him or leave him. I I didn't really know one way or another. I know, uh, uh Mad Mike watched a lot of that Sam Shaw era of of Impact yeah. and had yeah. a lot of opinions about it. Man, this is pretty great. Uh, he's a looks, lot different now than he was with Sam. Shaw. He's creepier, isn't he? And it's it's he looks the like, same character, he but it's creepier. Yeah, he looks like a Resident Evil character. You can tell he, he, does. <laughs> oh, he does. Like he the does. guy on the team that goes bad. That guy, you know? Yeah, like... <laughs> and ends up being tentacle guy at the but, end. But it's like at the crazy, you know, like with the hair. Yeah. I think the haircut really does yeah. it. He yeah. looks like That's a Capcom true. character. I mean, you, 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 you can <laughs> tell. <laughs> Every once in a while, you, you, you get somebody that, that has a good gimmick somewhere else, mm -hmm. comes in, and they're like, like, there's certain things that click with that creative team. Yeah. It says, you need to do this, this, and this. Boom, 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 boom. Right, yeah. uh, 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 Cross, Carrying Cross, mm -hmm. is that the right name? Um, he he's mm -hmm. got that, like I don't know if they're gonna. It, it, also, I see like all the theatrics about his entrance, and I wonder how long that'll last when I see something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Alistair Black isn't doing as much anymore, oh. <laughs> so, so that that reminds me too. Like you, and this was kind of a criticism of some of the NXT guys when they would come up to the main roster, mm -hmm. is that oh, this whole game, you know, like. Like like let's say no way Jose who's I mean he's gone now but but they're like oh that kind of thing that works better with the smaller audience or with the you know kind of the thing that once it goes up to the main roster it seems like almost like such an indie gimmick. Oh, kind that's of thing. so many. That's but, so many. But yeah. now you, you, you have him, got, you have Adam Rose, yeah, and, and stuff like that. stuff like that. But but or or things that that work on a smaller scale. But now even the big show is a smaller scale. You know, to where you can mm -hmm. you know if you were gonna move some of the NXT guys up to the main roster and do things. I mean, there's only so much. Yeah. You, you don't, do, you don't, you don't have, speaking, so yeah. you don't have to make decisions based on crowd reaction. Now yeah. Because there's no crowd, but there's also yeah. the, it's this literally the same scale because yeah. there's, they're shooting in the same places. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is, you know, and you talk about the special events. Like I recall back when, uh, impact was doing everything at universal studios. Yeah. Right. And and you think about like, well, we're gonna have a pay per view, and yep. it's gonna be here with the Universal Studios crowd. It's you know, it's just like, ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But then they would go. Again, it looks like feel bad in the front row. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. same show every time. <laughs> where where I never I never played the Impact video game, and I'm sure it didn't have these features <laughs> quite yet. But but um. Could you imagine like a, the selector select an arena feature on an impact game? Uh, wait, because well, was... you know I have it. Uh, my imaginary <laughs> yeah. friend I mean, Billy Ruxpin I mean, gave me a copy. Like the impact but... zone, you've got like the asylum. Yeah, uh, it's literally like different stuff on the TVs, right? Yeah. Well, hopefully, there's the asylum in it. Yeah. I, I haven't gone that far to unlock it. So, but you had the occasional. Oh, they go to England, you know, and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? Oh, the L two arena. I'm really yeah. like, this is much bigger. Uh huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, jeez. Uh, I, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Impact uh for existing uh let's see let's see uh yeah oh, twice no king george was in the studio once um for a thing and he he liked my donatello we we, we bonded over ninja turtles um so yeah it was for it, it i don't know if that footage ever got out there i actually emailed them recently it was with the red fred project um it, it it's helping uh kids like uh uh with with you know, illnesses like like the kids are writing books and they go illustrate them using some of the characters they have, and mm -hmm. that helps fund their 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 stuff. Um, so it was a really cool project that somebody came in and, and had a couple. Of people. We had him and we had um, but because well he's the lead in Ma Mindhunter too, so he, that which mm -hmm. films here in town. Oh, okay. And then we had another guy that's, that was also on that, and um, he's played multiple things, usually serial killers, including Professor Pig on Gotham. 
Uh, so that that was pretty cool. Right where Rob's sitting, right over there. Well, he said he was. He lead. did not. I, he, I did, he did not spit on the couch. I will have you know. Yeah. <laughs> now that I saw Hamilton, well, I get that reference. Well, well, and you said he was the lead in Mind Hunter. It's like, oh, okay. I know. Even if I don't know the guy, he's I've, the Mind Hunter. I've, I've met him, and I didn't even know who oh, you were yeah. talking yeah. about. So. Well, I, you know, he <laughs> he came in here, and Missy's just working back. You know, mm-hmm. in in her spot in the back here, yeah. and she tar- starts talks texting me. It's like. That's the guy from the rival school on Glee. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, here we go. And and the guy sent me like the list of stuff these guys have been on, and I just no sold it because I'm just like, yeah, this is like because to the entire thing, it's like mm-hmm. this guy's never coming in here. Yeah. <laughs> and I, they, it, you, when you said rival school, that made me think of the video game rival schools. No, but no, I'm like, no, no, man, no, no. that would have made Glee the a lot rival more interesting. Glee club <laughs> yeah. on Glee. Okay, yeah, hence the Hamilton okay. connection. That would that would have made Glee a lot more interesting for me. If, <laughs> <laughs> also, if Professor Pig was in it, yeah. but anyways, <laughs> Glee was actually pretty fantastic. But uh, I, that, okay, we're going to Glee territory, so we definitely need to get off this subject and and, and move on. Uh, pizza is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> let's go with that, uh, guys. I want to give a shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway here in the Pittsburgh area. If you're in the, in town here, I see a lot of people out of town in the in the chat room, of course. But if you're around, please go check out our good friends, uh, the feeding the the guests on this show. Uh, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park. I'm glad to have somebody in the studio that can actually eat some pizza, although he may have tried street tacos. Uh, <laughs> this is good. I like pizza. People come for all the taste of P- Beachview. Pizza has been about 43% of my diet. That's true, That's, too. Uh, it's, been, it's been the lockdown diet. Yeah. So, uh, But our good friends, uh, if you can't get enough, check it out, SliceOnBroadway.com. Thank you, everybody, that has been supporting them over these very weird times over the last several months. It looks like they're doing pretty good uh, every time I stop in down there, uh, uh, drive by. Or, or whatnot. Uh, so thank you for supporting them. Thank you for Slice on Broadway for supporting our show here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You're going to check in with Katie on something else that we do around here, and we will be back with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. This is Raymond Rowe, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Cameraman Rob is with us, and uh, we're going to try to get Riz to tell us a, a little bit more about how the projects we work on are really great uh, later on the show, because that was really great. That's going to uh, be off air. So that is, it, it's off air. Like, tell me, now tell me what you really do. That wasn't you, supposed to be you, that's how, Now that's tell me what you think about the projects that we don't work on. That's, uh, how, that's, how, that's how I, I, I'm going to, like, I'm going to be on the, I'm gonna be on the phone with you. Mm-hmm. While you're while you're laying your head down, telling mm-hmm. you how great your shows are. So. Rob, tell me how uh, uh, Riz, tell me how great the quarantine challenge is. Two PW. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay, Riz. Riz plays games. If you want to hear him, uh, Riz plays games. Whispering to you do... over video games to help you go to sleep at night, uh, as well. <laughs> uh, there's mainstream Matt. Mainstream Matt, of course. If you if you're on our Facebook group, you sometimes you get a little heads heads up to what's going to go on on the show. And uh, Matt took upon himself to uh, drop the big question with a survey <laughs> today. Well, I mean, every every once in a while, I come up with, with something that I think is funny t- to me, and I don't want to forget it because you know four hour four or five hours later, that's a long time for me to keep an idea in my head, Sorg, and it can just eject at any moment. So I uh, I had to drop it in there. Um, perhaps you've heard about this match coming up at this uh, Extreme Rules pay-per-view coming up. Um, you mean the Horror Show where, Extreme Rules? Oh, I think you can yeah, only say it horror, that way. The Horror Show, show and uh, it's going to be Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins in an eye for an eye match. Now, you know, that could mean a lot of different things, but, and I will read from Does it? the match listing on www.com. Does it? Does um, it really mean a lot of things? <laughs> anyway, this is the official rules for the match from the WWE website. A winner can only be determined by extracting the opponent's eye. Extracting? Now, Extracting. extracting, removing, forcibly abducting the eye of his opponent. Um, now, Sorgi, um, our, our Rey Mysterio is already down one eye. So we've got one-eyed Rey Mysterio versus two-eyed Seth Rollins. <laughs> and, you know, I, I can't help but wonder, 
you know, there are major, you know, long-term implications for this, you know, for the, for this match. You know, I, I, you know, if Seth loses an eye, does he become a pirate forever? No, um, please. Because it's the if, only if thing worse, you can do. What if, what if Rey Mysterio becomes, loses? Now he's down both eyes. So anyway. I, I um, hope he still got the, that the Daredevil question, costume. <laughs> the big question, just to get the jumping off point going here, because there are so many... So, so much to discuss. The The imagination runs <laughs> wild just thinking about how this match could play out, how it could end. I think we booked three different finishes in <laughs> within minutes of posting this poll. Um, but the big question is, who would be the better professional wrestler going forward after this match? Totally blind Rey Mysterio or one-eyed Seth Rollins? <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, so not, I want to see a pirate. Like, who is going to, whose career will be better post match? Uh, uh, who will be the better professional wrestler? <laughs> Blind Ray Mysterio whoa. or one eyed Seth uh, Rollins? I, oh, I, I have kind of an answer. <laughs> okay. I see it. It's, playing. Ki- it's kind of a question. Yeah, I see it's kind of a question. It's, <laughs> There's a it and the inflection. <laughs> it's like, well, um, I I want to see it play out like any sort of stip match, like hair versus hair match. Okay, you know where Seth is going to lose an eye, right? But he's going to spend the next three months trying to make you think he didn't lose an eye uh-huh. and <laughs> covering it up in wacky you know, ways until four months later when the eye has grown back. So like he's a he's a he's a he's a denier he's and, like and a then other people with the springy eyes. He's coming like out he's of like, like he's going to do that. He's like two thousand two Kurt Angle <laughs> with the hair you know, with the headgear. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so so are there gonna be like like seth rollins eye eye truthers or something yeah uh, trying to oh geez or or there's gonna be oh somebody's gonna steal an eye mm-hmm. from somebody else mm-hmm. you know and just i uh, i i you I know, know i i i think i think i think who's gonna be jeez rob better. is do- dodging the question by the way no he's not who'd be, who'd be the better better oh god i don't know <laughs> I think maybe just because uh, you wait, know wait. what you know what um, I love that there's a fake. Hey, no, I no, I've, I've I've got a I've I've got a good one. Okay, okay. Ray has been accident prone anyway in the last yeah. several years. <clears throat> I can only imagine what blind Ray Mysterio. Blind be like? Ray Mysterio. What if? And will it still just be his knees that keep fucking up? <laughs> yeah. It turns it's, out, no. it turns out, when completely blind, Rey yeah. Mysterio suddenly is the just like Daredevil. Yeah, yeah Daredevil is maybe, the yeah. even crazier of a luchador wrestler. He can dig out the old. He's got a Daredevil costume. I've seen it. You know, he does. It, it probably still fits. He's gotten probably bigger since then. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> mm-hmm. he was pretty jacked in the late two yeah. thousand, so it may have actually be a little looser. Yeah. So he can cut the sleeves. Uh, out. Yeah, he cut the sleeves. I don't think I had sleeves to begin. Modify with. it. Yeah. I, I really don't. Riz, what what, what do you think is a, again? We're asking <laughs> one eyed right. Seth Rollins, completely blind Rey Mysterio. Who's the better wrestler? What the hell is this question? So are this we doing? Great... Are we doing better wrestler or the better fit? I think the we're doing better, better wrestler. The question the is better wrestler. wrestler. Okay. All right, because if we're going with like personality, uh, the, the wrestling personality, then it's going to be Ray, You're the saying... blind Ray, managing his son. Oh, <laughs> okay, but not if we're the question. About wrestler, like, like which wrestler has a better chance of being Brock Lesnar in the state after this? Oh, it's Seth Rollins. I think I'm still going with Roy Mysterio. I still think he's going to get like but I, superhero da- daredevil. But I kind of like this whole Rocky Balboa's got brain damage, so he's just coaching Tommy Gunn. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to see like a who's was it Sagat? Who's a who's the one-eyed? Yeah, yeah Sagat. Fighter? Tiger. Yeah, Tiger yeah, knee. <laughs> We hinted at it with uh, Cesaro at one point. Mm-hmm. Just, just bring it out with Seth, man. Just make him go completely crazy. Have him shave his head, mm-hmm. come out, just do it. Mm-hmm. 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 Just do it. 
Do it. Uh, Sorg, if you're wondering, my answer uh, obviously is totally blind Ray Mysterio. Uh, for the same reason, we all know that if you lose your sight, Jake the Snake Roberts taught us this many years ago when we were all kids, yeah. that when you lose your sight, your other senses become heightened. So yes, the yeah. daredevil thing is totally accurate. And Rey Mysterio gonna... would become daredevil and he would probably be even better than he was. And you're going to win that blindfold match that happens mm -mm. at SummerSlam. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> that blindfold as, as, match is coming. As somebody and, um, as somebody who has been assaulted by an Italian man in a blindfold during a wrestling match, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, love love you, Mambo. To explain to them how the blindfold matches are supposed to work. Um, in case you're wondering, in our in the Facebook group, um, in the poll, nine votes for totally blind Rey Mysterio, yes. five votes for one-eyed Seth Rollins. So and then yes, what, and then what was yes, my totally blind Rey Mysterio is the answer. Yeah, and then what was my comment in the thread? What? Hold on. Oh, oh see, oh, you did I, have a good one. Yeah, here. I don't have your. Yeah. Yeah, where is it? Yeah, where is your comment? Oh, I, I just see. I, I just see Matt and Sh referee Sean yeah. Patrick talking about. Uh, sentence structure <laughs> i i had uh oh, yeah, i'm I, sorry about that, that i had i had wwe films presents see no evil three. Oh, it was in the oh other my thread. God. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah it, it, it was in the other thread yeah. um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did, so did you a minute to discuss the booking of this match that we, we came up with our with our ideas for uh, how this match could end <laughs> uh, uh, oh this was in that oh god there's 22 comments on this thread oh no yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right real quick so, tell, tell me about this i said I'm suggesting to Mad Mike that it would be apropos for WWE to do the swerve finish where Ray pulls out Seth's eye, but the ref does not see yeah. it like a first blood match that doesn't go right. And then Seth puts the eye back in and goes on to win. And then we kept talking it out and realized, no, we can take this to an even higher level. Ray pulls out Seth's eye throws it off the roof of the building so it can't be retrieved. The referee does not see it. Dominic turns on Ray, pulls out Ray's eye. Seth takes Ray's eye, and then Seth puts Ray's eye in Seth's head. So now Seth still has two eyes, but Ray has lost one of his eyes. Because there's eye. nothing so in the Ray's rule book that says you have to have your own eyes. Dominic and has turned <laughs> heel, and now Seth Rollins has to wear has two different eyes, and he has to wear a monocle. From going from now on, going so does does so is Seth's Ray Eye <laughs> sentient to Ray or is it sentient to Seth? Does he see? Split oh my screen. god! Like um, is Mr. It like Potato Man and Toy Story, they no. can like see like a different. That's crazy. And and what about see, and, see what see what's happening when there's not really wrestling going on? <laughs> and I just thought of something too. You know why the ref didn't see any of this? Because the ref doesn't have he's any blind. eyes. Because Seth went to get Ray or whatever, and then you know the refs refs in the way, and uh, there go the you know there go the ref's eyes. You know, wow. so, so oh, every, everybody's just losing fucking eyes. All of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, like becoming like losing an eye is like Ric Flair bleeding from the head. It's just yeah, like you just... bump into anything. It's just the guy. Oh, you look at him hard enough. And, yeah. then, and then somebody's going to try us on an indie show when we come back from the shutdowns and yeah. it's just going to go bad. It's going to be a lot of blind oh, indie wrestlers so out there. So I, remember, I, I remember Corey Graves doing that. Yeah. Was, he, was that say Corey Graves doing that? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, from the well, chat, one Bobby. Last thing, uh, okay, one, okay, one last thing, okay, Sword, from, from the comments on this story. Yes. Chad the Shad came in with this would be the true I quit match. Damn it. Mm. Damn it. Or Bobby, I, so good. Bobby F. J. Town from the chat says, rebrand uh, Seth Rollins as Monday Night Missed I. Uh. <laughs> That's a walk. That was That's a hike wow. to get to that one. You, you kind of got to see the hype, drop, I guess. Drop your laptop and walk away. You you did it, buddy. Just, yeah. <laughs> Bobby, you can go pee now. Um, yeah, just, <laughs> sorry, that was off air. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, anyways, well, now that we've solved that problem, uh, it is time for our assignment for the week. And, um, we, uh, you know, you know, uh, you, you, everybody's been homeschooling for so long and, uh, your lessons have been, uh, of course, uh, 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 messaged in and we've all been kind of, uh, working at our own pace and everything, but every once in a while you do need to have the teacher come and check in on you. And uh, we have arranged that, especially this week, uh -oh. uh, with us. Uh, 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 Professor, are you on the line? Professor. 
Uh-oh. G- greetings, class. Uh-oh. Welcome, oh, Professor <laughs> Jacob Edwin is with us on the show. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, my name is Professor Jacob Edwin. This is now Edwin's Lessons. Uh, I'm happy to see everybody here. Uh, we seem to be missing one. And it was one I was specifically looking forward to meeting. Uh, yeah, uh, Mad Mike uh, is not on the show. He did leave. He's skipping. He He's did skipping. submit his homework. He better. He better He's, have a note. He, he, he does, but yeah, he, wait for the note. Uh, we will we'll turn that in in due time. Signed, Mad Mike's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Miss Mad Mike, I think yeah, that's Ms. called. Ms. Mad Mike. Yeah, yes, it's a family. Yeah, it's the family name. So, uh-huh. so of course, we did have an assignment. Uh, uh, you know, like, and in, in you introduced it last week. But uh, if you could tell us again for the class, sir. Sure. Uh, short review. <clears throat> it was Dean Ambrose versus Triple H at mm-hmm. Roadblock. Uh, I think a one and one and done pay per view roadblock. Uh, actually, technically a WWE Network exclusive or special event, mm-hmm. uh, something of a, a well lit uh, house show um, for the WWE Championship leading up to Triple H's match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and Dean Ambrose was heading into his match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. I believe all this year. Um, this of course, and you know, this was, uh, leading up to this triple H won the Royal rumble that was for the WWE championship. And it came down to him and Dean and, uh, this, this would now then lead to this singles match here at roadblock. What did everybody think? Um, well, it was long. Uh, Also, we need to apologize to, uh, Bradley who apparently started watching the wrong roadblock leading into this <laughs> so oh, I'm sorry. Was not uh, was, yeah the match was not you on that road block pay attention to the assignment that is given that's right that's right uh we because were at uh, that other road block. yeah we were at that because the red walk was here and and this one was in toronto and uh and they were in the same year uh in december and march respectively uh so um I, I, this this was I, it, it, this was this was a good long match. This is probably the longest assignment that we had so far at a good, like, it was like a half an hour of the show. Uh, not oh, just to... wait. What's that? <laughs> oh, just wait. I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. All right. Um, but uh, it, it, it was, I, I rem- it, it was more kind of feeling what was going on at the time. Because I think this is the first glimmer of Dean Ambrose maybe doing anything and, and kind of getting a shot at a belt like this, right? Uh, 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 Matt, uh, uh, Riz, do you have any thoughts? This is, um, from my recollection, this was as hot as Dean Ambrose ever got mm-hmm. in WWE. This was peak Ambrose, this period right between that Royal Rumble and when he had that match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, which frankly didn't go the way people who like Dean Ambrose wanted it yeah. to go. But um, that's neither here or there. Um, everyone keeps talking about the length of the match, but I didn't mind it that much. I mm-hmm. I did enjoy this match. I remember enjoying it when it happened. And I enjoyed it again. Um, full disclosure, I am a big fan of Moxley and Dean Ambrose. And I will also confess that uh, I have come to terms with the fact that i'm also a fan of triple h in certain situations uh and this was one of them so i yeah i did enjoy this match a lot Mm -hmm. there there are a couple of guys like currently in the business that can make triple h work as hard as he did then for 20 odd minutes against d ambrose that was just there i mean that was that was it that was for a how for a, a a glorified house show they put on a show on that show period mm-hmm. and i remember now, i did have uh, the oh, uh, sorry sorry Rob. oh I was, I, was, I was gonna say uh i remember at the time too it was what well, it was two three weeks after mania right before before well i mean before. yeah that's what i mean yeah. yeah go leading into it to where 
you, you were thinking it's like there's no way they're gonna let Ambrose get away with it because this is just setting up. You know, it's it's like a workout for yeah. Triple H yeah. to get you know leading into Mania because he even with when he run the Rumble, it was some bullshit. And Ambrose was like you know, the, the lesser of the Shield yeah. guys at this point. But, but 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 it made you actually believe that Ambrose could win it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, oh, are they gonna change it? You know, the Santino effect. Yeah, where it's. Or it, or could it could it make Mania into a triple threat? Or mm-hmm. would you get straight up Dean versus Roman? You know, where it was very believable as even though it was sub- essentially yeah, like a throwaway I mean not throwaway, but you know, like a warm up match for Hey, it wasn't uh also on this card Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper against Brock Lesnar. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking at the I rest wonder of how the card, that goes. looking at the rest of the card, I remember seeing it when it was on. You, you know, but looking at just looking at the card now and not remembering any of it, you can look at it and go, okay, that I know who won that. I know who won that. Yeah. I know who won. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed, I, I did enjoy uh, a couple points of this match, or at least reflected on a couple points. I, I really liked uh, how much offense Ambrose got, and, and, and they really kind of put over that he, like, you know, hey, he's this crazy guy has a plan and, and, and really kind of threw Triple H off of his game, no pun intended. Um and also the very strange almost dusty finish thing where he got the the finish and the pin but his own ro- legs were under the rope and it got called off and mm-hmm. I remember that being kind of fishy at the time and I you uh, you don't see that too often um you know did you did you guys have takes on that it's just the um it, it one of these unfortunate parts of Dean Ambrose in WWE was this like slipping on the banana peel kind of thing that they would do with him from time to time where he would be his own undoing. So whether he was, you know, trying to attack Bray Wyatt with a television set and the television set explodes in his face or in this situation where he's trying to, where he has Triple H beaten and he puts his own feet under the bottom rope, which just kind of was this, yeah, it stunk, but (laughs) it was, it was, pretty shocking at the time i did not even remember that part of the match Mm-mm, happening where he got the visual yeah. pin and i was like what the hell is going on here and that crowd went nuts for that mm-hmm. so all right uh well so we do have the submitted homework uh professor i'm gonna i'm gonna read this to you and uh it, you know if you give grades she or, get half credit he, yeah he gets <laughs> half credit for this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so after this i'd like to give my own thoughts on things too absolutely absolutely because I, I know i know you had some on this that you expressed and then i want to get you get your take on this too so um greetings mayhemers uh and, and if you guys this is a throwback guys uh it's the guy that's appalled that one week he hadn't come in is the week that we finally see some balls on professor jacob edwin is mad goddamn mike uh okay so after uh after a couple weeks of pretty decent assignments this motherfucking professor shit uh <laughs> two at two all right uh which i'm uh, i think it's gonna be more less than half credit uh which i'm still waiting to see an actual degree okay uh gives gives us uh what i like to call the triple h half hour match uh trademark there's a little TM. He actually did the subscript. Uh, now, your enjoyment of the Triple H half hour match trademark uh, depends on a couple of things. First off is the opponent. In this case, it's uh, Dino Machino. Dean is fine in this match, but he really he isn't really allowed to showcase himself until at least 20 minutes into the match. This brings to my second point. These matches are always at least 12 minutes too long. I call it the Batista factor since we all uh, know that no Big Dave match should ever be longer than 12 ma- minutes. I disagree with that. Uh, the final factor is the false finish, all caps. Because unless it's WrestleMania, Trips never loses a Triple H half hour match. Trademark. Now, the false finish in this match is especially egregious because it's not a real rule. Dean nails Dirty D's and then gets a three count because Dean's Dean's legs are under the bottom rope. It doesn't count, and this has uh, literally never been a rule. Hold on. We, we got a rule book over on our shelf. Maybe we'll double check on that. Uh, How? What's the date on that? The date on that? Um, I'm sure a lot of people who wrote notes in the in the edges are, are not employed anymore. Uh, the forward, <laughs> what was the forward was by like like the forward was by like uh, 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 
So it's almost like is this the King, Daniel Bryan? I think is this the King James rule book, or is <laughs> yeah, it the, the you know the the King Vince the, the, rule the, book. whichever yeah. you know? Anyways, back to the email. The crowd is, <laughs> the crowd also was largely dead for the middle of the match, and I actually fell asleep during it and had to finish it in the morning. So professor, professor, please do better. Oh, social distant alchemist oh, wow. ending transmission sent from wow. my iPhone. Uh, professor, wow, that was that was a bomb of a of a response there as well. Uh, uh, tell us, tell, tell, I guess your thoughts on the email and the thoughts on the match. Fantastic. I mean, really, this guy, I've never met more of a keyboard warrior with uh, the, the shield of a keyboard actually imprinted on his arm and the sword that is a limp mouse that is everything that represents him. I mean, to explain to him, to explain to him and most of you how, how little you actually know, I'd have to unteach you what you think you know now, reteach you what you should have known then, and then st- still tell you why you're still wrong about all of these matches. All of your complaints are, it's too long, it's boring. You don't understand. You don't understand what you're watching. It's a shame. All right, so three major points that we want to hit on with this match. First of all, none of you mentioned the fact that Dean Ambrose actually pinched Triple H's nose in the opening about five minutes, and that was fantastic. I mean, it's the biggest target on Triple H, and he went right for it, and it, it, it got a huge interaction with the crowd. Mm-hmm. The next thing is the false finish. The false finish was beautiful. And I mean, it is in fact a rule. Your feet can't be on the ropes to gain leverage and you can't be out of bounds to actually count a pin. I mean, it's just that simple. Anytime that, uh, well, I've ever obviously never broken a rule, but anytime I see someone put their feet up on the ropes, the, the, the count stops because they're using it for leverage. So if you put your feet out of bounds, it's also a rule. That's always been the case it's always been it's the case in collegiate wrestling and greco-roman mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh in mma i mean it's the case and you can't hold on to the cage in mixed martial arts so you can't have your feet under the ropes and it was so beautiful because it was just it was just one mistake that dean made it was just one mistake he made one mistake and then he makes his next mistake by fl- he he this is dean's biggest problem and now john moxley for those of you who don't know Dean's biggest problem is throwing caution to the wind and trying to throw his body uh, into peril to try and win. And it didn't work out for him because he elbow drops Triple H through the table on the outside, a be- just and well executed. And it was done exactly right. The problem is it shouldn't have been done in the first place. And then it cost him the match right after that. That is where the crowd arguably was right at their peak. We, you had uh, you had dirty deeds. And that that might be the peak. If not, then the elbow drop through a table because the crowd will always react when someone goes through a table much, you know, uh, kind of like uh, lemmings. You know, you can kind of guess exactly what they're, <laughs> they're going to do. Um, and then right after that, Triple H hits the pedigree. Um, but Dean Ambrose won. He won at one point. He pinned Triple H with his finishing maneuver. And that makes Dean, you know, that is a stepping stone. Someone said, uh, I forget who said it, but that this was the hottest. This was the peak Dean Ambrose. I absolutely disagree because he then later won the WWE championship and he ran SmackDown for several months, uh, feuding with AJ Styles and Chris Jericho and doing a wonderful job over there running shop where he, you know, trimmed the fat. He figured out what he needed to, to do in order to, to be on the top. And then he was on top. Going back to uh, Mad Mike, is that his name? Yeah. He's certainly mad. Yeah. He's certainly mad. He's mad because he's insane that he doesn't understand how good this match is and how good these assignments are. A string of good assignments. All of the assignments have been good. And that's going to round me right out to you guys complained about the length of this match. Let's get to the next assignment. How about that? Sword? Oh, boy. I have no idea. We're going to go to now the stays in the 2000s because I know you guys roll your eyes whenever I go pre 2000s. This is going to go to 2008, January 27th. We all know what's in January. 
the 2008 Royal Rumble match. Start to finish, one of the best Royal Rumbles out there. Um, and honestly, uh, this year's Royal Rumble can probably be one of the only ones to actually match up with it. Uh, in terms of surprises, excitement, ebb and flow, it, it's, it does not feel like a long match. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a truly, truly satisfying match to watch all the way through. And uh, and truly satisfying for a few of us because several of us, including Matt and Mike, were actually in attendance for that. Oh, perfect! Very pay per view. So that'll be a, that'll be a wonderful uh, throwback for uh, some of us. Uh, Wait a minute, that that's uh, the one in Madison Square Garden. You yes. guys went to Madison Square Garden. Oh. Uh, yes, because Matt and Mike was living in the Bronx at the time, and that was our first uh, Mayhem Takes Manhattan. Uh, I don't believe Matt and Mike lives. I don't think he truly lives his life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm my hand. Um, I just want to ask a quick question, to the Professor. Yes, yes. Uh, main event, Matt. Is it? <laughs> oh, no, no, you're good. Um, I just want to know. Just maybe, I'm, maybe I'm reaching out um, and uh, and hoping for a little reinforcement here. But uh, if you would have to say if uh, any of the uh, Mayhem Show um, or members of your classroom, so to speak. Which of us would you say is at the head of the class right now when it comes to these assignments? Who's uh, who's uh, who do you think has been uh, um, doing the best or uh, getting the most or um, how can I describe? It? Who do you think uh, is um, who, who do you think who have you been most impressed with uh, during this whole ordeal? All right, so in uh, I'm gonna be as courteous I can to your very desperate plea to be teacher's pet. Um, whether it was consciously or subconsciously, you were actually pointing at yourself while you were asking this question. Uh, and I have to say my answer for this and my answer always when I'm asked this question, who's teacher's pet? Who's head of the class? It's me. It's still me. I am the head of the class. That's why I decided to start teaching it. I'm sorry. Your your desperate plea for attention and your want to be uh, maybe the next professor, but it just doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well as Professor Jacob Edwin. It, it falls flat. You fall short. You reached. You reached just like you said, and you just didn't quite make it. Dang it! Just son of a. All right. Maybe next time. Yeah. Now, I was speaking of being the head of the class. I don't know if you're familiar with the 80s sitcom Head of the Class, which started with, I believe it was Howard Hessman was, was the, the teacher, but he, he left or got replaced at some point by Billy Connolly. If, if you had to step out and not, I guess, this not be your class anymore, who would continue your, your classroom? Hmm. It would just have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> just cancel it. Who I mean, who who could? Yeah. I mean, unless you actually get Billy Connolly in here, <laughs> I think it'd be an interesting get. You know, you could try. Well, we've gotten we've gotten weirder before, yeah. so I, I mean, mean, that's like replacing Mister Feeney. Like, <laughs> thank you. you can't. Ah, that might be the best compliment I've ever gotten. Place, place, Fantastic. Place, place, that's place, place, place. yeah. That's your next. That's that's, not, that's your next T-shirt. Better than Mister Feeney. Hmm. <laughs> I've recently been studying other past wrestling professors um, and come across quite a few. Uh, really? Yeah. Dean Douglas. Uh, Tanaka? Uh, yeah, yes. Dean Douglas. Yes, that's the guy. That's the deep cut that I did. <laughs> Dean Douglas. <laughs> Christ. Get original. Come on. He, he didn't get tenure. He, no. No. no, he did. No, he didn't. No. No. <laughs> If there was a wrestling community college, yeah. <laughs> he'd have flunked out of that one yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, Rizzo. Oh, good. Rizzo, right? <laughs> I'll go with that. I've been called worse. What is it, Rizzo? What is it? It's just Riz. Riz. Mm -hmm. Uh your your new name is Rizzo the Rat. Like the yeah, Muppets? that's good. one of my favorites. Sounds good. That's one of my favorite Muppets. Okay, at least it's one of your favorites. It's good. It's good. It's good. I'll take the favorite. That's good. He's had You're not my favorite. Rizzo the Rat is one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, uh, professor, uh, um, 
uh, again, uh, you, you, uh, if people want to support uh, higher education and continuing uh, education, you, of course, have a pro wrestling tea sh- uh, shop. I sure do. Um, I'm not stripping for your benefit. I'm stripping for mine, uh, um, as are most strippers, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> direct your attention. This is the Professor Jacob Edwin T-shirt. It has stuff on the back uh, for if you buy at live shows. Um, however, if you buy online, you do not get a back. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jacob Edwin. J-A-K-O-B-E-D-W-I-N-N. Um, there's that. There is also my T-shirt for uh, the faculty, which is my tag team with my tag team partner, Coach Michael Osborne. Um, and then there's a, an old school shirt, uh, actually of his as well, uh, on that store. We'll be uploading more and we'll be updating the, uh, the faculty t-shirt very shortly. Uh, there's, there's just a slight alteration we're going to make. Um, but yes, thank you, Sorge. Thank you for, thank you all for having me on. Thank you for actually attending class. (laughs) Unlike Mad Mike, uh, who I think he's going to try. He's going to try and turn this into something it isn't. He thinks this is going to be a heated rivalry. I can, I can already feel it. I can already feel the type he is. Um, but I can tell you this is not going to be Hogan and Andre. This is not going to be uh, The Rock and Stone Cold. This is Speaking of The Rock, this is going to be more like The Rock versus Hurricane Helms. He's going to try and make his name off of my back and off of my coattails, and it's just not going to happen. Mad Mike is mad. He's never lived, and he's out of his mind. There you go. Well, thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Professor, for joining us here. Uh, if you'd like, we're going to uh, go into, as we usually end the show, with what we learned from wrestling this week. If you'd like to contribute to that as well. No, I've learned uh, everything. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go. Very well. Thank you so much for joining us. So, everybody, including the chat room, uh, to let us know, what have you learned from wrestling this week? Who wants to go first? Well, I'll tell you, Sorg. Mm-hmm. I think you just learned some things, but I mean, I, I, not I what did, you learned in the last 10 minutes. That was a lot. And, and believe me, and believe me, my sucking up to this teacher has only just begun. <laughs> he, he will, he will pronounce me. He will one day pronounce me the valedictorian of this endeavor. So I, I will achieve head of the class status. Now that he's gone. Yeah, I'm talking. That's right. He's <laughs> gone. I'm talking. That's what's happening right here. Um, <laughs> um, I learned that, um, incredibly, my brain can barely wrap its mind around this. Um, not everyone appreciates Trent's mom, Sue. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's yeah, not yeah. over with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. There's at least one person she's not <clears throat> over with. Yeah. But she's over with me, Sorg. Yeah. She, with me as well. Yeah. So, uh, and, and by the and... way, if you did watch being the elite, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she briefly joined the dark order. Mm-hmm. Very briefly. Drinking the Kool-Aid. Drinking, drinking the, the Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. <laughs> mom, stop right. drinking that Kool-Aid. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't bring my mom to pro wrestling shows. That's that's one of the reasons for yeah. sure. Yeah. So bad move. Oh boy. Um I, uh, I, I Rob, what'd you learn? <laughs> I, just through through well, and I, I mentioned this kind of off the air, I think, a little bit. Um, through some of the rewatching and re-listening to to a certain podcasts and stuff, um, I've I've learned that as far as WWE is concerned, as far as like injuries or people you know, or deaths or any anything or people getting sick, uh, they will never have anything on Texas in the eighties because I was listen, watching some world class. Uh, and and listening to the the history of world class, and it seemed like there were people just. They, they had one good year down there. Was it the Laps fan you were listening to? It was to? Laps fan because that's yeah. why I started listening to that show about a year and a half ago when they were in the middle of their their thing, and then I listened to all the other episodes, and I'm back around to that again, and I just started re-listening to it, and it's just, yeah, just what Fritz put his kids through, mm. and just the you know, like especially Mike, <laughs> and just like what a sad just kind of ending it it all it all had. Um, and I remember watching it as a kid. You know, as a kid, it was in reruns already. I think, like on ESPN. So mm-hmm. the t- so the tail end of it, when it had actually already, you know, it might have 
that they're already doing stuff with USWA and became mm-hmm. global and stuff that like, I remember seeing early like Steve Austin and Cactus Jack and all that. And Rick Rude, you know, as they were starting to actually pop up on like WCW and WWF. So it was like, at the time I just thought it was just, okay, this is where everybody had just passed through at some point, you know? Yeah. yeah. But then not knowing until like years <clears throat> later, you know, having an idea of it and then, you know, getting the whole history knowing that that place was just dead already, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just, you know, it was where a lot of guys got their start, but their best days were like way, 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 way behind them. So, so related to that, I want to give my, the, what I learned this mm-hmm. week, um, because Joe Dabrowski, uh, um, on Twitter and on Facebook actually has been sharing just fantastic stuff, including like the interview with the driver of the Lex Express bus. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but he puts out this tweet, um, back on July 5th and, and, and I did DM this to at least one independent promoter. Cause that's my thing to send ideas to indie promoters mm-hmm. to see what happens. Because <laughs> it, it just it like someone slide this in your DMs and let's see what happens yeah. when wrestling comes back. Uh, he says, uh, uh, "Which indie, indie is going to bring back the Memphis Hospital Elimination Match? It's a twelve-man tag team elimination match, six on six, uh, where the only way to be eliminated is if you start bleeding." That would have sounded crazy before we learned about the I versus an I match. Uh, uh, it, the, this seems so quaint. It was. Uh, <laughs> uh, it had Lawler. Uh, some of these, I don't know all of these. Some of them are are um, uh, abbreviated. Uh, Lawler, Fabs, Boogie, Idol, Roughhouse versus Assassins, Ventura, Condry, Landell, Norvell. The Fabs are probably the Freebirds, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there you go. There you go. I like I go pro is definitely on the side of Lex Express. Look at that. Uh, so <laughs> there is that. Um, Hi, Riz. What'd you learn? I learned that we are now getting into the realm of the people that we want to be on top. Finally, getting some recognition from other wrestlers. Hmm. We uh, this past week we had uh, Xavier Woods on uh, the SVR 2008 GM mode. He specifically pointed out that Cesaro should be on everyone's top of the card. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. And also a little like I really 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 wish more people got on the ever rise bandwagon on the what bandwagon the, the Matt well, Martell the, uh, the two guys off 205 yeah. yes mm. okay Matt Martell and Chase Parker I really need to start watching 205 again 2.0 3.0 mm-hmm. bad boys like they, they can promote themselves mm-hmm and they are showing how to promote themselves. Hmm. In this time, they, they they do the backstage the backstage promos, like old school, no announcer. I mean, no no nobody holding the microphone. They're just talking to the camera, talking to you, making sure they get over, and they do. And. They need more. They they need more people looking at them. Period. That's all. Sorry. Awesome, awesome. Also, uh, follow Risk Plays Games and subscribe <laughs> to Risk Plays Games, and of course, and subscribe to the you know IndieWrestling dot US. Yeah. Oh, look, it's Jack Pollock and Lee Moriarty. It's Jack Pollock. Look at that. And Lee Moriarty. Look at that. Look at those guys. A couple, couple of guys. Guys. Couple of guys. Couple of good dudes. From the chat, Tina. Sorge. Tina actually. Sorge. Yes. Sorge. Yeah, it's not the first. It's not the. It's not the first time that a teacher has uh, called me the wrong name. I. I. I oh. oh sorry. I've heard Rizzo so many times. <laughs> it doesn't even. It didn't even like when he said that. I'm like, it doesn't even bother me anymore. Yeah. I. I had a feeling when when he was given the homework assignment, given given what he was saying about long matches. Like okay, like Royal Rumble, it's it's gonna be long, but there's stuff going on. Yeah, I thought it was gonna I, be a I thought Flair it be, Broadway. No, I thought it was gonna be, and especially given his, you know, as much as he was loving on Triple H there, 
I thought we were getting one of the Iron Man matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I thought, thought we were going. Yeah. I'll and, take a rumble. And, and and also maybe you know, maybe we would have pre- appreciated the bop in the nose more if Ambrose would have spent the next twenty minutes working the nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, from the chat, <laughs> there's no psychology. No psychology. From the chat, no. Tina points out that the fabulous one, Stan Lane and Steve oh, okay. uh, Kern, were the were the fabs. Uh, also, Tina says, if Bray Wyatt, what, what she learned, if Bray Wyatt is not eaten by an alligator in the swamp fight, why the fuck are we even doing this match for? Right? Uh, Alex Battleground. Miller, or Battlegrounds? Is the, the Battlegrounds. Team? That's for the video game, right? Video game. Um, yeah. But, and they have an announcement tomorrow, I think, too. So, uh, yeah. Alex Miller learned that Undertaker is, was a legit Hell's Angel. I didn't see yeah. this. I didn't see this come out. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town learned that he has a new favorite wrestler that just happened within the last segment. I also learned that there was, uh, <laughs> there will have to be it's well, Billy Connolly. Well, well <laughs> there will ha- there. <laughs> I learned also learned there will have been two eye for an eye matches in 2020. Who was the other one? What? Oh, this is the, um, Moxley and, um, oh, Santana. Yeah. Oh. Oh, but but geez. they but they did something. They put a little twist on it. They took each other's eyes out before they had the match. They yeah. didn't wait until they actually got them. Yeah, yeah. Like everybody had an eye patch. So like like everybody. It's like it everybody had the same. Patch. They said the same handicap in Street Fighter. Okay, that's yeah. uh, everybody was Sagat. Yeah. <laughs> There, we carried it through. <laughs> Tiger. There you go. Well, thank you, Professor Jacob Edwin, for joining us. Everybody enjoy your assignment. Uh, Mad Mike, I can't wait to hear Mad Mike's responses on Monday at the uh, Monday Mayhem Warriors podcast that we do live on Facebook Live and the other uh, social media platforms of the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, thank you, Mainstream Matt, for dropping in. Check out Listen to Your Parents podcast on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed and on Facebook. Thank you. Uh, Riz plays games as he uh, he already plugged himself. So yeah. I already uh, plugged myself yeah. a lot. So there you go. I'm doing it again too. Riz plays games on Twitch. <laughs> and if he goes off air, he's going to continue plugging himself. Rob, Riz cameraman Rob, uh, as well. You That's can see as him. much as I can do right now. Sorg. you can see him ringside during the uh, the fight underground in the two in the Prospect Pro Wrestling. New there. matches that are still going to be going on for several weeks. So I I think uh, I think you were only in danger a couple of times there. It was. Like I think it, I, I think I might have been in more danger than you were. Well, at two PW we were definitely in more danger. Oh, there was a lot of danger there. But yeah. with Fight Underground it was it was pretty well pretty well contained. I don't think anybody wanted to really fall on a. Uh, I mean, somebody almost got hit by a car. Floor. I understand, but yeah, it was a very <laughs> dirty floor. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. Keeping it clean and keeping so, it in the ring. Somebody, somebody, somebody went on the floor and they had white tights, and I'm just like, ooh, that, those aren't anymore. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> There you go. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time.